Okay, everybody, welcome to AP Physics today. We're talking about the rocket with a booster problem. Um, just so you know what I'm talking about here. Our boost for the rocket has an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. And that would be this whole piece gets boosted by the part of the rocket where at this point right here you can see that part is going to fall off. Okay, so this whole piece, the sustainer and the booster is accelerating um, for 3 meters per second squared. And it does that for a time of 10 seconds. At that point, signified right here, the booster then is in free fall. And the sustainer then has a new acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. That happens for 4 seconds, that acceleration. And then at 4 seconds, that booster is going to be in, or that sustainer is going to be in free fall too. Okay? So the question in red up there then is how far is booster from sustainer at 16 seconds from launch? Okay, so I would suggest drawing a picture so you knew what was going to happen. Okay? So my picture would be this. I've got the rocket here with a V sub naught equal to zero, and it's gonna have an X1 or displacement that occurs because of acceleration one. Okay, so that's gonna happen because of my first acceleration, which is the three meters per second squared, and the time is 10 seconds. Okay, so at this point, it's gonna be 10 seconds of time, accelerating at one will give us our first displacement. At that point, the booster is going to have a velocity. So the V that you achieve at the end of this acceleration, that is going to become the initial velocity of the booster at that point. So the second part of the problem then, you're going to have an initial velocity not equal to zero. That's going to keep taking this booster up but the acceleration at that point is going to be then, um, you know, little g, so negative 10 for this part of the booster. Okay? And the sustainer, though, at this point is going to take off, and it's going to have um, a v sub naught that's not equal to zero either. Um, but you can say that this v sub naught of the sustainer the sustainer, the second part, when it's under free fall acceleration, should be the same as this V sub naught of the sustainer. The difference is they have the two different accelerations. One is of the, of the gravity, and then the sustainer here is going to be an acceleration due to the, the engine, which is, at this point, I'll just throw it in there, 4 meters per second squared. And the time that's going to happen is going to be 4 seconds. And so then we're going to have our sustainer up here that is going to have a V that's going to be greater than the V sub naught that we talked about right here. We said V sub naught is not equal to zero, right? Um, and then at that point, um, it's going to have not just a V, but it's also going to have acceleration that's equal to negative 10. And then we can find those two displacements and then we can put it all together as a problem. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's start solving this then. So if I was really trying to show a good way, like really make sure I did this right the first time, you know, I'd come up with this problem and I would say to myself, okay, I'm going to have, you know, my first problem is going to be finding that displacement for the first acceleration. My second problem is going to be finding the final V after that first acceleration, which then becomes these two initial velocities. And then my second problem, you know, I could veer, I could go anywhere at this point, but, or my third problem, my third problem, I would say then would be this one, where I find my actual displacement with the initial non-zero velocity and the acceleration. My fourth problem, and then so I'll have this one then in place at that point. So I'm done with the booster. And then my fourth problem would be, be finding uh, 
because I have this non-zero velocity um, uh, initially, and I have this uh, acceleration at this point, my fourth problem then would be to find uh, you know, how high I am, or my displacement at that point, um, and I would have to you know, think about where I am in that case. And then, and then finally, my fifth problem would be my displacement that occurs during this change in acceleration with the initial velocity that would be equal to the final velocity that I found here. Okay, so I don't know how you could organize your own thoughts and things like that, but I just kind of want to make sure that I do that. Um, so, first problem. First problem is... So we said that first problem was finding the displacements of the of the boost. Okay, so you know I've got a v sub naught equal to zero, a v equal to we don't know. Acceleration is three meters per second squared. Um, time is ten. Okay, and then my displacement is what I'm looking for. Now in my head I can see that this is going to be um, 150 meters. And the reason why I can do that in my head is because I know that I'm going to accelerate at 3 meters per second squared every second. And I got 10 seconds to do that. So, you know, our formula V equals V sub naught plus AT gives us V equals AT. My final velocity is going to be 30 meters per second. Now, that was something that I was going to find earlier, right? Or, or later for my next a next piece. So I'm going to mark somewhere that, hey, this velocity is going to be, okay, so right here at this point, my initial velocity of that, when the boost falls off, is 30 meters per second. And in fact, that's the initial velocity of the sustainer too. Okay, now, did I have to do that for this problem? Well, it depends on how you do it. For me, it seemed like the easiest thing to do. Um, you know, my x I could have found as uh, x equals v sub naught t plus one half a t squared. V sub naught is zero, so then x equals one half times three times ten squared. Which isn't that exactly what we did up here? Or I mean, I'm sorry, we didn't do that up here. What we did is in my head, I knew that this was going to be 30 meters per second, so my average velocity was 15 since I started at 0, and then multiplied it by 10. So this is what I did in my head, and I came up with the answer of 150 meters. Do you guys understand that? Okay, um, so I guess I didn't show the second part of this. Uh, you know, if I was still going for x this way and not this way, I, I could plug this 30 into the v, and then I have 30 here, and I would have my average velocity is displacement per time, or displacement is 30 plus 0 divided by 2, all divided by 10. X equals then, um, I'm sorry, I was doing a little bit too much in my head. Um, the, from here, your x equals average velocity times time, so x would be 30 plus 0 divided by 2 times 10. My displacement then would be 150 meters. That's what I did in my head. You can get it this way too. It's really the same formula, just the skies. Okay, so my, in the, so my um, x sub naught of my sustainer at this point then would be 150 meters. Okay? So now, the second problem that I said I needed to figure out was how much more displacement, or in other words, this sustainer is going to keep going because it has a non-zero initial velocity. So that's going to keep going higher, right? So... Okay, so now to find out, you know, and, and I drew this x up, but I don't know if it's up because 
it might actually turn around and start falling back down. Um, but if we look at our displacement formula that includes the initial velocity, x equals one half at squared plus one half at, or x equals b, so not t plus one half at squared, x equals then my initial velocity like we talked about earlier, 30 meters per second, 30. And how much time does this have to fall? Well, we did 10 seconds already. 16 is the is the total, so it has six seconds to fall. Okay, so we times six plus a negative five, right? Because half of negative ten. Now you can screw yourself up here if you don't have your positives and negatives in order, because the acceleration is in the negative direction, the velocity is in the positive direction, and our time for this amount is what would we say? We have six more seconds, so square that is 36. Okay, so my displacement from this initial position then is, okay, so what we find out then is we have a positive 180 and we have a negative 180. So that's kind of interesting. You know, you just put numbers together real quickly and you get something like this. So our displacement is zero meters. Now the distance would be 360 because you know the booster starts here but it has that acceleration downwards. It has a velocity upwards. So what happens is it slows down and it comes down and I guess the numbers we picked gets it right into the same position which is pretty interesting. So displacement of the of the booster overall from the beginning to the end then is zero which means that booster is going to be at 16 seconds it's going to be at 150 meters at 16 seconds so now we're done with the booster we know where that is i'm going to highlight that here so we know that this is the final answer for where the booster is 150 meters above the initial position that it started. Okay, so now after doing that, we have to figure out what's going on with the sustainer. Okay, so the, the sustainer now <clears throat> undergoes another acceleration. So if we look at our sustainer data, we do have an initial velocity, and that's going to be 30 meters per second. Our final velocity, we don't know. Our acceleration is a four meters per second. Notice, squared, notice it's a positive number, just like the velocity, which means it's gonna speed up more, right? And then our time that it does that acceleration is four seconds. Our displacement is kind of what we're looking for. Um, I would, I would say 92 meters is probably the displacement. I'll just kind of put that off to the side because I like to do my mental math. Um, but really what you want to do here is look at our x equals v sub naught t plus one half a t squared. So displacement here is 30 times four plus half of the acceleration is two. Notice it's positive because we're still increasing in speed and we're going in the positive direction. Times uh, 16. Okay. Um, so it looks like my, my estimation was completely wrong there, wasn't it? Well, that's good because I'm taking brain data as we go. Um, we put this into our calculator. What do we get? Okay, so now everyone can chuckle at me. If the teacher can be wrong, so can the teacher. The actual displacement... And so can the students. <laughs> the actual displacement then is 152, and that's a positive number, which means it's you know, above. So if we're looking at our sustainer, our sustainer, um, I'm going to kind of draw it down here. Our sustainer is taking off, and during its acceleration with its pop, with its um, with its black powder, it reaches 152 meters above where it was in the first place. Okay? And this, that's 152 meters above this 150 meter mark. Okay? But does it stop there? No, because it has an initial velocity that, at that point that's not equal to zero. Um, so what happens 
Well, and the acceleration is going to be negative now because it's 10 at that point. So it's going to continue on up and it may or may not turn around depending on how much time we have. But if you look at the total amount of time, we've already used up 14 seconds. So we really only have two seconds left to have uh, this acceleration due to gravity. Okay, so I'm going to say that my sustainer then um, at this point, I better, I better read something a little bit here. Just to keep in mind what's happened so far is our, we found out that our booster is at 150, 150 meters above at 16 seconds. And then we found out that our sustainer, then our sustainer ended up going how much higher than that? What? 152, so the, so the sustainer at this point, at 14 seconds, is at um, 302 meters, because it went 152 more from this point. Okay, so now we have to figure out what's going to happen with the rest of this. Okay, so at this point, we can use this formula, x equals v sub naught t plus one half, at squared. The problem is we don't know what that initial velocity is yet, right? So we have to kind of go back to this piece here and find out what our initial velocity is. So the initial velocity, or the velocity final during the acceleration stage is going to be the initial velocity plus acceleration times time. So our final velocity after the acceleration is going to be 30 meters per second, that was our initial, and then it accelerated at 4 meters per second squared for a time of 4 seconds. So our final velocity then is going to be 46, 46 meters per second, which is our final velocity of the acceleration stage. But then it becomes the initial velocity um, of the free fall stage of the sustainer after burnout. Okay, so now we can take that information and plug it into our uh, other kinematic equation here. So our displacement from this point, 302, then is going to be equal to 46 meters per second times two seconds plus a negative five, right? Because it's half of negative 10. Um, so it's gotta be slowing down, right? Times um, four, which is T squared. And so our displacement at that point is gonna be uh, 72 meters. Is that correct? Okay, so this 72 meters is positive, which means it is gonna be displaced, this rocket is going to go another 72 meters high, so 72 plus 302 then becomes a total height of 374 meters at 16 seconds. So now we can take 374 meters, it's the position of the, of the sustainer, um, 150 meters is the position of the booster, you know, subtract those two. 224 meters is the total distance from the booster to the sustainer. Any questions? Okay. Have a good